before you start planning your project or before you start uh, doing MS project, sit down with your group and discuss the content of your project. For example, if you're planning the outline phase, sit down with a group and distribute the tasks amongst yourselves. And the best way to do this would be first and foremost to build up a tree or a work breakdown structure of the project. You can see you have a semester project here, you have a design, building design project, then you have other tasks. But if you just concentrate on the building design, this can be broken down into outline, scheme design, and detail design one. You plan each phase on its own. So before you do the outline phase, break it down into the design project itself, the technical installations, the structural design, the BPM, and in this way break down each of the items into different headings. For example, here we've got analysis, sketching, 3D model, and under analysis we have these items. And each person in the group would then use these items and allocate uh, under the headings uh, an item to, to a specific person. And the same goes for the uh, technical installation, structural design, and the BPM. Once each person has been allocated their resources, then they go to the next stage where they go to their own computers and do their own part of the planning. And that's what I'll show you on the next slide. Here, can we, here we can see uh, Peter's allocations. So under building design, he's going to do analysis. He's going to do a fire analysis. He's going to do some sketching. He's going to do some technical installations, etc. And all this he will plan on MS Project in his own file. Once everyone has done this plan and saved a baseline, they can insert their individual plans into a common plan. And only then, when the baseline has also been saved on the common plan, can they begin to follow up in their own plans. This is the Gantt view of the MS Project uh, 2003, no, sorry, 2010 version. I'm just going to go up into File now to set it up. And under File, I go into Options. I go immediately into Schedule here, and I put up my uh, working time here. And um, I then uh, set this uh, task type to Fixed Duration. I set duration to days and I set work to hours and I make sure that auto scheduling is chosen. Um, apart from that, I'm going to use decimal for uh, to show the assignment units. I uh, make sure that effort driven is off and I click OK and then I'm set up to do my work. Now I know most students like to work in Excel but MS Project is actually built on Excel originally, so if we change now from, if you don't have this uh, this view bar here, you can right click and you can toggle it to uh, view bar. I can open and close the view bar by right clicking here. Uh, then I go into the task usage view here, and here I can begin to plan doing my uh, project. But I'm planning for one person now. So let us say I'm planning for uh, Anna, my group member. I can start by going into Format and choosing um, under Format Project Summary Task and the title of the bar immediately appears. Double click on that and I can call it Anna's um, Outline Planning. Click OK and you can see the title in there. Next, I'm going to write the assignments under the headings uh, that Anna has to do. These are the tasks and headings that Anna has to do in this assignment. You see, analysis is a heading, so I have to mark the tasks under analysis, namely sound and BR, right click and use this right indent. You can now see that sound and BR belong to analysis and analysis is highlighted. Sketching is a, is a heading and under sketching we have three, these three assignments 
mark them, right click, indent them. You can see they now belong to sketching. These are tasks on their own. I am now, actually, if I just pull this curtain over here, I should now be ready to go in and plan Anna's um, assignment. The next step is to just treat this calendar side of uh, the MS project uh, as a, uh, an Excel sheet, basically. So uh, we now plan so that our Anna's total day, which is indicated by this top line here, doesn't exceed eight hours. Perhaps she has some teaching uh, or le uh, teaching lessons during those, those eight-hour days, but uh, she doesn't have to plan those those teaching lessons because they're already planned uh, in the schedule, but not in this MS project. So let us say that the, her first uh, week she she only has uh, uh, in the, on Monday five hours of, of work to do. Uh, or five hours available, then she can plan five hours on sound and maybe next day there's four hours and the third day there's uh, four hours too. Uh, after she's done a couple of hours of sound, she'll do four hours on uh, uh, the building regulations and perhaps uh, four hours here and another four hours on building regulations here. Uh, these five hours uh, the, 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 they are the actual amount of time she has to, to use on the, the, um, the sound studies. But perhaps the other three hours that make up the eight-hour day are used on uh, lessons in class where a teacher comes in and, and tells them uh, the, the students something. So she only has these five hours available for Monday. But these hours, you can see here, she has eight hours she can work totally where she's working in... Uh, in, on the project and the four hours here she's working on this but per perhaps the other four hours is used for lessons so you don't have to plan the lessons you just have to plan your work in the group in this way you can use uh, the calendar here to plan and now the next plan is is the the uh, plan of the ground floor so to, perhaps you do six hours on the ground floor there and maybe four hours on Monday uh, five hours on on Tuesday and the cross section, let's say she can do that in three hours there and uh, four hours there on Wednesday. And the elevations, once the cross section is finished, she can st do the elevations. Perhaps she'll use uh, four hours there and four hours uh, on Friday. When the, uh, when the elevation is finished, she can go over and do the 3D model on uh, perhaps Revit. Perhaps that's going to be eight hour uh, Revit on Monday and Tuesday. And the estimate can be done on Wednesday. That will probably take about, let's say, four hours. And the presentation uh, is going to be on, uh, uh, let's give uh, uh, another four hours for the estimation here. The presentation could be on Friday, and that will take two hours when she presents the work with her group. Remember, the hours that are not making up the total eight hours are perhaps used for other things, such as lessons in the classroom. So once you've done this, you've actually got a plan. And I can prove this by going into the Gantt view. And you can see this is the plan for, um, for Anna. None of the activities are linked in this case because in, in reality, none of the activities are dependent on each other. So we're, we're not linking here. We're just working like we work in Excel. We'll go back to the task usage view here. So now we have Anna's plan. The next thing we need to do is to allocate Anna to this plan as a resource. To do that, we go into the resource sheet, which is down here, the two heads on the resource sheet. We write Anna's name on it, and we go in and we put in a rate, uh, what she costs an hour. Let's just put in 200 kroner for the moment. Uh, we go back into our task usage view. We choose all the activities that are not titles. In other words, if I choose uh, this activity here, hold down my control, choose this one, this one, this one, this one. These are not titles. Once I've chosen them, I can right click and I can assign resources. And because we established Anna as a resource in the resource sheet, she's now here. So when I assign the resource, you can see that the, that the pitch changes slightly. Every activity has got Anna as a resource under it. So if I want to use uh, go to to see uh, Anna's uh, allocation here, I would uh, mark it, press con uh, shift and control at the same time, 
and press, press F5 and you, you have the, grow, the go to. You can also scroll to the task um, by going into the scroll tab, uh, the task tab here and using the scroll to task when you've marked the task. For example, if I want to go to this task here, Anna's cross section, I mark it, I go to task and I click scroll to task and it appears there. So going back here to, uh, to this one, we can now see that Anna's scheduled work is uh, five hours on this day on this task sound and four hours on this day and four hours on this day and you can see her, uh, her working day she's working five hours on the project on Monday and the other three hours she's working in, with lessons in classroom theory lessons perhaps she's wo working totally eight hours on the project on uh, these two days uh, etc before we can uh, carry on with the planning and each person does their own planning and each person goes through the same process Anna is going through we have to save a baseline uh, a baseline is freezing this uh, picture of the plan to the calendar if I go into the tracking Gantt here I can see my tasks as a Gantt but with much uh, thinner figures or much thinner um, bars uh, than if I clicked on the Gantt. You can see the Gantt is, is got Anna's name on it and uh, they're thicker bars. But if I go into the tracking Gantt, they're thinner bars with a 0% follow-up. Before I can follow up, I need to save a baseline. Before I save the baseline, I just want to look at the report. Uh, before I do that even, I'm going to put in some extra um, columns in here. I'm going to mark the column here by clicking, left clicking on it, then right clicking and inserting a column. And this column is going to be C for cost. So I'm going to use this cost column here. And you can see the cost of Anna's uh, work on each task. I can also, you can see the duration of the task. I can also see the, the, the amount of work on the task by putting, uh, marking the column, right clicking, and inserting a column called W for work. When I click that, you can see the number of hours I'm going to use in, the, in those. For example, if I look at sound, I've got a three-day task, but it takes 13 hours in the course of the three days. Uh, if I click on project and go into reports, the default report here can be seen by selecting it. And if I select it, I can see the default report that um, <clears throat> the start of the project and the finish of the project this, the scheduled duration is 15 working days. The number of hours in this is 81 days. And the cost, total cost is 16,200. So if I go back here, all that, 16,200 for the cost, 18, uh, 81 hours for the work, and the duration are the same. But if I just go back again into the report and click the overview report, you can see that there is nothing next to the baseline. So the baseline has not been saved yet. I need to save a baseline. And each person should save a baseline before they go on to follow up and before they go on to make a common plan. So I'm now going to save a baseline. I'm going to go into project. I'm going to go into set baseline and set baseline here for the entire project. Click OK. Notice a new bar appears. This is the baseline. <clears throat> the plan is now frozen to the screen. If we go into the report, again, into the uh, default overview report, you can see everywhere there's baseline, we have the same figure as scheduled. Henceforth, the baseline will stay the same, and the follow-up will give a new schedule, and the difference between it will be indicated by variance in each section here. Now, I'm the, say, the baseline is saved. I am now going to stop this video and go on to the next stage in the next video.